So in this video, we're going to take a look at a quick example of some stuff to do with producer theory. So yes, producer theory is a jump into the deep end as far as all of a sudden content goes. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot of relationships to kind of hold together as we go through this. So the point of this video is to take a look at a few examples that pop up in the quizzes, a few of the difficulties that students often run into, and hopefully be able to get those uh, sorted out. So let's go jump over, let's go take a look at an example of this. So first kind of example is we have a question, something along these lines. It says, okay, we have a quantity of 10,000 units, and then it has, okay, at this quantity, we have something like an average total cost of, let's just make up some numbers here. We'll say our average total cost is 20, and average variable cost of, we'll go 15, and we'll go a marginal cost of, and let's go in this case here, 21. From this, we'll then go through and we'll start asking a whole bunch of questions. And from these questions, we need to then kind of decipher what's going on, where, what exactly is this telling us about our whole production? Um, and where are we with respect to capacity? Where are we with respect to diminishing marginal returns, diminishing average returns, et cetera, et cetera. And looking at this, right, often it's just like, I have no idea. I have a whole bunch of numbers here. I don't even understand what's happening. So how do we approach this? What do we do in order to solve this? My recommendation, my big thing is, hey, you hit this kind of question, first thing you wanna do is you wanna just graph just a generic set of cost curves. So let's take a look at this. Up here on our vertical, we have our dollars per unit. On our horizontal, we have number of units. And then to take a look at our curves, what we have to start off is, I'm gonna start off with just the average variable cost. Again, keep in mind, we don't have to draw the average fixed cost. We can always infer what that is as the difference between the average variable and the average total. Uh, before I start drawing, let's just get to that point again. Keep in mind, average total cost is equal to average variable cost plus the average fixed cost. So, hey, we can always rearrange. We can always go average total cost minus our average, uh, sorry, average total cost minus, that's a minus there, minus our average variable cost equals that average fixed cost. So right, this can always be inferred if we have the other two. So a little bit of a bonus there for us to keep in mind. So in that sense there, when I'm drawing, I can just go straight to drawing the average variable cost curve. So keep in mind it's U-shaped, it drops off, hits a minimum, and then starts to rise, something like that. We'll call that the average variable cost. Then we're gonna have the average total cost. So again, starting higher, still U-shaped. It's gonna hit its minimum to the right of the average variable cost. It's then gonna get closer and closer and closer to the average variable cost, but it will never touch. It'll never touch that average variable cost. It will get infinitesimally closer. And the reason being, right, because the vertical distance between these two curves is always gonna be that average fixed cost, right? It can always be inferred from that. Now, okay, here doing this freehand, I get a little bit squiggly here. These lines should be smooth, should be just kind of smooth and increasing as we go through. Again, we're freehanding. It's tough to get it exact. My expectation for you doing it is exactly the same as my expectation of me drawing it right here. So, okay, we have our two cost curves, average total cost, average variable cost. Again, they're both U-shaped. Again, the average total cost is always above the average variable and the average total cost hits its minimum to the right of where the average variable cost hits its minimum. Driving these cost curves, holding them all together is our marginal cost, which drops off, hits a minimum, comes up to the minimum average variable, minimum average total, and then carries on upwards. And again, that is our marginal cost curve. So, okay, we have our cost curves drawn. Now, what exactly is going on here? Well, what is going on is we're saying we have some quantity of 10,000. Let's use a color that I haven't used on the graph here. So we have some quantity of 10,000. That is, hey, we have some point along this horizontal axis such that if we draw a line and we just draw a line right up, the corresponding points that it touches each line 
is going to give us these numbers here. And we need to find the point such that this is true. And then once we find that point such that it's true, we can then kind of figure out, okay, are we above capacity, at capacity, below capacity? Are we experiencing diminishing marginal, diminishing average returns, et cetera, et cetera? So, okay, let's just draw a line to start off. And hey, since I already drew that yellow line on there, let's just pick that point. So let's just notionally call this our quantity of 20,000. And then what we want to do is we just want to say, okay, at quantity of 20,000, I have my average variable cost. What did I say this guy is? I said that there is going to be a value of 15. Perfect. Okay. Well, what other value did I have? I had average total cost rate just going up this line. Next one was right there. That guy there, that gave me a value of 20. And then carrying on again, right? Next guy, just carrying up the line. Next one I intersect is, of course, my marginal cost there. And where do I find myself? Well, that there's a value of 21. So, hey, yeah, my scale's maybe not the best from where I placed this yellow line, but I did place it just off the start in a place such that hey, numerically this works. 15 is less than 20, 20 is less than 21. So that is, so to say, where I've put this quantity of 20,000 is roughly correct. So based off of that, I can then answer some questions based off of this. Um, and I'll redraw this in a second and kind of show us, hey, with respect to capacity, diminishing average, diminishing marginal, et cetera. But let's take a look at if we had just drawn this yellow line at a different place and how would that have looked so let's just clean this up quickly okay so in this case here let's draw this yellow line somewhere else let's go and we'll draw this yellow line uh, in this case i'm going to try to draw it so it comes in between the minimum average variable and in between this minimum average total i'll see if i can get that exact right i'm freehanding here but yeah that's not so bad that's not so bad Oh, it jumped there, but it's more or less straight. We're good. So we have, again, let's say that this is my quantity of 20,000. And let's just do the same thing we had done before. Let's just carry this on up. And let's take a look at where it touches each of the lines. And then put through our values that we were given. And say, okay, does this make sense? So, okay, carrying on up. First line we hit is our average variable cost curve. So, okay, average variable cost. What did we say that guy was? We said average variable cost was 15. Okay, so far so good. Carrying on up, our next line we hit is our marginal cost curve. So again, let's mark that right there. That's our marginal cost curve. What's our value of marginal cost? 21. Carrying on up, finally, we have the blue guy there. What's going on with the blue guy? That's our average total cost. So we'll draw this guy across. And what do we have for average total cost? We have an average total cost of 20. So in this case here, we see looking at this, things don't line up. We have 15, 21, 20. This doesn't work, right? That is where we place this yellow line does not work for the values that we were given. So that to be the case, this yellow line could not be in this area between minimum average variable, minimum average total. So hey not not a potential location we saw in the first case where that potential location definitely was now we're saying hey it cannot be here okay so that gives us the idea as to how to place this yellow line really three different places we could put it one of the places we could put it and actually here to just be able to show this without such a messy diagram let's clean up and then i'll talk about the three different locations okay so three different locations that we could put this and maybe you caught this here. I just noticed it right now. I kept saying quantity of 20,000. Hey, here we have our quantity of 10,000. Ah, I just picked the wrong number as I wrote it down on the horizontal axes. Um, that there was just a notional number to give it some context, not overly important to the actual question we we're working through. So hopefully that doesn't mess anybody up too much. Okay, so three different places that we could put this line, ultimately speaking. First case is below minimum average variable cost. So that is somewhere to the left of this point here. So 
So here, let's let's just draw let's just draw this point down. There's my minimum average variable cost. From there, uh, let's go like this. There we go. It's a bit better. From there, and then that goes that way there. Okay, so we could draw it somewhere to the left of that. And the reason why I did this like that is because if we remember this whole bit here. That was my, uh, from that point on, I experienced diminishing average returns. Uh, did I hit an N or an M? Returns. Okay, it just looks like an M in the way that this shows up. So from that point onward, I'm experiencing diminishing average returns. So hey, I could put the yellow line anywhere to the left of that and anywhere to the left of that. I would have marginal cost lower than average variable cost, lower than average total cost. Next point I could put this is, as we just did in that last example, somewhere in between minimum average total and minimum average variable, right? That is somewhere in between this green line and this blue line. And that's gonna be somewhere such that we are experiencing diminishing average returns but such that we are below capacity, right? Keep in mind that point right there, the minimum average total cost of the firm, that is the capacity of the firm. So putting that point there in, we could say, hey, from this point above, any point up there, we would say we are, uh, let's make this a little bit more clear. Actually, all together, let's make this a little bit more clear. Let's go and get rid of, that line there because all we want to say is that hey this point right here that point right there that is q capacity that is the quantity at which we are producing at our capacity meaning right anytime we have a quantity above that point we're above capacity anytime we're at a quantity below that point we are below capacity Okay, our final place that we could place this yellow line and work it out. Oh, sorry. Let's talk about what's going on in that case there. Keep in mind where we were just talking about. We were talking about placing the yellow line somewhere along this bit in between the green and the blue line. If we did it in between this green and the blue line, we would have average variable cost being the smallest, followed by marginal cost, followed by average total cost. So we'd see that relationship occurring. Final place is the first place we put it, which is somewhere ultimately above capacity. If we place that yellow line anywhere above capacity, we will have the relationship such that average variable cost is less than average total cost, and average total cost is less than marginal cost, as we have in our scenario here, showing us that, hey, at this quantity of 10,000, we are clearly producing above capacity. And hey, if we're producing above capacity, we are also experiencing diminishing average returns. Keep in mind, there's one other kind of point of reference that we could throw in here that's of interest. And that's uh, about right here. That's our minimum marginal cost curve. And keeping in mind any point from that minimum average cost curve onward, we have diminishing marginal returns. So, hey, anywhere along this yellow line, we're experiencing, well, we're producing above capacity, experiencing diminishing average returns, experiencing diminishing marginal returns. If we're producing right at this blue line, that is average total cost equals marginal cost, well, then we'd say we're producing at capacity, but experiencing diminishing average returns, experiencing diminishing marginal returns. If we're producing anywhere in between this blue and this green line, well then in between this blue and this green line, right, anywhere in here, that's gonna be a situation such that we're below capacity, still experiencing diminishing average, still experiencing diminishing marginal. Final scenario, we're producing anywhere below the green line, in which case here, it's gonna be difficult to tell from just looking at the numbers versus how they relate, but we can definitely say that we're producing below capacity and that we're definitely not yet experiencing diminishing average returns. That is, 
were not experiencing diminishing average returns. With just the numbers as they're given, we actually cannot tell if we're experiencing diminishing marginal returns yet or not. Is keep in mind, no matter which numbers I give you in that scenario, marginal cost will always be less than average variable cost. So can't necessarily have a clear picture as to what's happening in that case. Okay, hopefully that helps for a kind of questions where it's, here's a bunch of numbers, are we producing below at above capacity? Is the firm yet experiencing diminishing average returns? Is the firm yet experiencing diminishing marginal returns? Hopefully that helps be able to answer those. There's a few other kinds of questions that end up kicking around based off of this. The other kinds that kick around are, again, you get a set of numbers like that, and it goes, what is the average fixed cost? And okay, you could draw this, but in this case here, you don't necessarily need to. In this case here, they're just saying, hey, what is the average fixed cost of the firm? You just need to recognize, as we talked about at the start, hey, average total cost, that is average variable plus average fixed, or average total minus average variable equals average fixed. So, hey, hey, okay, 20 minus 15, average fixed cost is going to be equal to 5. Perfect. And right, mind you, we could change this up. We could say instead of average variable cost is 15, we could change this up altogether. We could go, uh, let's make that eraser size a bit smaller. There we go. I could say instead, okay, average fixed cost is equal to 5. And hey, in this case here, now I'm going to figure out, hey, what is my average variable cost? Okay, same method. Average total cost minus average fixed cost, right? Average total cost minus average fixed cost. That's going to give me my average variable cost. So, hey, in that case, their average total minus average fixed. What is this average variable cost? Well, that's going to be equal to 15. Keep in mind for a few of the questions, I could ask the situation like I did initially. Hey, place the yellow line, tell me if we're above, at, or below capacity, or if we're experiencing diminishing average returns. I could give it to you with just this average fixed cost and no average variable cost. And you'd have to work through that, figure out the relationship between, in order to obtain the correct average variable cost. Other situations I could give you, right? Other situations, what else could we look at here? We could also look at a scenario where I don't even give you the average total cost. So that is, there we go, the average total cost is completely gone. And what do I give you instead? Well, I give you the average variable and I give you the average fixed. In that case there, we can still work it out just the same, right? Because as we said here, hey, average total cost, that is just equal to average variable plus average fixed. So, okay, what is the average total cost? Well, the average total cost is 15 plus five, that's gonna be equal to 20. So how we can work those guys out. So, hey, all three of those, average total, average variable, average fixed, quite often I will only give you two out of those three and I will ask you to find the third one. Or the question won't ask you to find the third one, but you'll need the third one in order to answer the question. And you then need to work that out. What other kind of questions exist, right? There's more things we can do with this. One of the other things we could look at is I could say, just strictly with the information here, instead of, hey, what was the average total cost? I could ask you, what was the total cost? And right, this is where people freak out. They're like, oh, oh no, what do you mean? Where does that even come from? Well, okay, this is gonna be a bit of a two-step one. First thing we need to figure out is what is the average total cost? Well, we just did that, right? We just said, hey, average total cost, variable plus fixed, 15 plus five, okay, that's 20. From here, we can go back to the definition of our average total cost, keeping in mind, hey, average total cost, that is just equal to our total cost divided by Q. Hey, wait a minute, I know my average total cost, I know what Q is, so hey, I have two out of the three, I can do some algebra to figure that out. So okay, average total cost of 20, equals total cost over 10,000. Okay, 20 times 10,000. What does that give me? 20 times 10,000. Well, that is going to yield for us 200,000. 
So I get my total cost in that sense there of 200,000. Now keep in mind, right, I could ask you very similarly, what is the total variable cost? What is the total fixed cost? And you'd work through it in the exact same way, right? Keeping in mind, total fixed cost is just equal to, uh, sorry, let's write that the other way. Average fixed cost is equal to our total fixed cost over Q. Or my average variable cost is equal to my total variable cost all over Q. And in each of these cases, as long as I know Q, as long as I know or can figure out what the average cost is, well, then I can do some algebra and solve for the total cost. Okay, one last scenario. One last scenario, this is the one that gives people probably the most trouble. Let's take a look at that one. Okay, our last scenario goes along this lines. It goes one of two ways we can ask this. We can say if we were to produce plus one unit, by how much would my total costs increase by? So, okay, if I were to produce one more unit, that is if I went from producing 10,000 to producing 10,001, how much would my total cost increase by? What would be my, how much more cost would I face for producing that extra unit? And people often freeze with this. They go, I, I have no idea. We have a static scenario here. How, how am I supposed to figure out how much more cost I face by producing one more unit? Well, it's because you forgot the definition here. One of our big key definitions is that of marginal cost. Okay, let's take a look at that. Marginal cost is the change in total cost, so hey, how much does my total cost change by for a change in output? Keeping in mind this change in output, this is a marginal change plus or minus one, right? That incremental change in output. So hey, in this case here, what we've just said is how much does my total cost change by if I change this by one? But okay, we don't know that. That's what we're interested in. So how do we figure this out? Well, okay, keep in mind you know that. We know that marginal cost is 21. So we have 21 equals our change in total cost all over our change in Q. Well, we just said, hey, we're doing plus one unit. So, okay, plus one unit. So, hey, we don't need that plus one. That often confuses people. Just having one on its own, that's implicitly presumed to be positive. So, okay, we work that out. What is our change in total cost? Well, 21 times one. 21 equals our change in total cost. If I were to produce one more unit, my total cost would increase by $21. So, okay, what are some other takes that I can have on this? Some of the other takes I can have on this, instead of saying, hey, how much does my total cost increase by? I could say, what is, I'm not gonna write the whole thing. What is my total cost at my quantity of 10,001. Oh, there's one too many zeros there. There we go, at 10,001. What is my total cost at this point? And in order to figure this out, I need to work out, first of all, what is my total cost at a quantity of 10,000? Well, okay, I can work that out. Average total cost equals average fixed plus average variable. So, okay, that's going to be 20. Okay, now that I have my average total cost, I can work out my total cost. And okay, keep in mind, average total is just gonna be the total cost divided by, right? I have to write that down. Average total cost is the total cost over Q. So okay, this is my unknown, but I know that my Q is 10,000, and I know that my average total cost is 20. So that's 10,000, not 10,001. Okay, so 10,000 times 20, gives me a total cost of $200,000. Okay, I then go and I produce this plus one unit. What is gonna be my new total cost? Well, my new total cost, we just said, hey, the change in total cost for producing plus one unit was an increase of $21. So what's gonna be my new total cost at that point? Well, my new total cost is gonna be 20,000, 21, so I said 20,000, $200,021. And I can get the result that way there. Okay.
Hopefully this video was able to help you out playing around with a bunch of the algebra, a bunch of the relationships that we get numerically from these cost curves. Of course, if you have any further questions, if you have any other uncertainties about this, please feel free to reach out to me. You can email me, you can post on the D2L Frequently Asked Questions page, or of course, you can comment below and I can get back to you. Thanks.